Sports. In this video, we will be discussing the EMC VNXE's remote replication feature. In our agenda today, we'll start by discussing at a high level what remote replication is. In our demonstration, we'll walk through how to configure remote replication using shared folder storage and show how to initiate a failover and failback of the replication session. We'll conclude this presentation with how your environment can benefit from this feature. Storage replication is a process in which storage data is duplicated either locally or to a remote storage system. Replication produces a read-only point-in-time copy of source storage data and periodically updates the copy, keeping it consistent with the source data. Storage replication provides an enhanced level of redundancy in case the main storage system fails. This minimizes the downtime associated cost of a system or site failure. In this video, we will be discussing the EMC VNXE's remote replication feature. In our agenda today, we'll start by discussing at a high level what remote replication is. In our demonstration, we'll walk through how to configure remote replication using shared folder storage and show how to initiate a failover and failback of the replication session. We'll conclude this presentation with how your environment can benefit from this feature. Storage replication is a process in which storage data is duplicated either locally or to a remote storage system. Replication produces a read-only point-in-time copy of source storage data and periodically updates the copy, keeping it consistent with the source data. Storage replication provides an enhanced level of redundancy in case the main storage system fails. This minimizes the downtime associated cost of a system or site failure and simplifies the recovery process for the natural or human-caused disaster. Remote replication occurs between the source VNXE system and the remote VNXE, VNX, or Solera system. Remote replication can be leveraged in many situations, including site disaster recovery. If a primary site were to go down due to disaster, then the secondary site would be used to access the information. For content distribution, where data located in a data center can be replicated to the remote site for local access. And for backup and recovery purposes, where archived information located at the remote site can be replicated back to the data center. If the primary site becomes unavailable or inaccessible, usually as a result of a disaster or unexpected outage, an administrator can execute a failover from the destination system. From this, the destination storage access permissions change from read-only to read-write and host can then access this active storage resource. Once the primary site is up again, a failback can be performed to return everything back to its original state. Using our earlier site disaster recovery scenario, we'll establish remote replication between the source shared folder storage located on one VNXE system and its replica shared folder storage located on another separate VNXE system. Once the two sites are in sync, we'll test the failover and failback functionality. We'll start off by logging into the VNXC system on the primary site to identify the storage resource to replicate. For demonstration purposes, we've already created this source storage resource. Notice that replication has not been configured for this storage resource yet. Here, we'll go into the details of the shared folder storage resource to create the replication session. We'll click the Replication tab and choose the Configure Replication to a Remote System option. Notice here that you also have the option to create a local replication to the pair storage processor. When configuring remote replication, the first step is to create a trusted communication path between the source storage system and the destination storage system. This is known as a replication connection. In this pane, we'll enter the management IP address of the VNXE system at the secondary site. We'll then enter the administrator credentials. In the summary pane, we'll verify what we entered before proceeding. The replication connection creation process is initiated. The source system must verify that the destination system exists before establishing this connection. We see that the replication connection has been successfully created. We'll click the close button when done. 
Once the destination system has been identified and a replication connection established, we'll create the replication destination. We'll click on the Create Destination button and choose Yes when prompted to open another instance of Unisphere. We'll have to log in to the Destination VNXE system to create our replication destination. We'll leave the name at its default and click the Next button. We see here that the source system and source storage resource has already been identified. In the Configure Storage pane, we'll choose our pre-configured storage pool. You see that the wizard does not allow you to edit the size. This is because the storage size for the destination storage resource must match that of the source storage resource. Here again, we'll choose the default choice to match the source storage resource and we'll enter a shared name that we can more easily recognize. We'll choose to configure the protection storage, but not create a snapshot schedule. For the protection size, we do not have an option to change the value. Just as we saw for the destination primary storage, we must match the protection storage with that of the source. After verifying that the settings are correct, we'll click the Finish button. The destination storage has now been successfully created. We'll close out of this wizard. We'll return to our Create Replication Session wizard and verify that the replication destination that we just created has been recognized. We'll click the Finish button to initiate the replication session creation. We can see here that the replication session between the shared folder storage resources has been established. Attributes of the replication session is shown in a replication tab. The recovery point objective or RPO of the replication session is detailed on the right. The RPO is the maximum amount of time that the source and destination can be out of sync before an update is automatically performed. Keep in mind that a smaller amount of time will require more frequent synchronization and increased network traffic. On the other hand, configuring a longer amount of time means that a higher risk of data loss because the source and destination will sync less frequently. Now, we'll navigate to the Replication Connection section to confirm that we can see our Replication Connection. Let's head over to the System Replication section. Now that we know that the Replication session was successfully created, we can test the failover and failback functionality. Since we want to test the failover functionality, we'll initiate the failover process from the source side. By doing this, the failover will sync the source storage resource to that of the destination storage resource. Once this is completed, the access permissions will be reversed. The source storage resource will be read-only accessible and the destination storage resource will be read-write accessible. Note that the failover process should be performed on a destination storage system only if the source storage system is unavailable or inaccessible. This can result in data loss if the source and destination systems are not synced at the time of the failover. We can see that the failover process completed successfully. The failover can also be seen on the destination side. In the event that the original source storage resource or site is available again, we can perform a failback by clicking on the failback button. The destination storage resource will sync to the source storage resource, and the access permissions are returned to the original configurations. There are many benefits for implementing replication in your network environment. Replication allows the administrator to quickly switch the roles of each replication pair so that the replica storage object can resume data sharing responsibilities in place of the downed primary storage object. Replication also helps minimize the downtime associated cost should there be a system failure and simplifies the steps to recover from that failure. Each replication session may have different requirements in terms of tolerance for loss of data if the session is interrupted. Users can configure a unique recovery point objective or RPO policy per replication pair. With this configurable RPO, Users can safely build DR strategies that meet various data loss tolerance levels. If a DR event occurs, users can fail over to the replica storage resource knowing that the data loss between the replication pair is tolerable under the organization's guidelines.
Having a replica of your data can be beneficial not just in disaster recovery situations. With a replica of your data, a copy of the source content can be distributed. This lessens the IO traffic going to one VNXE system. For more information about remote replication, refer to the VNXE Data Protection White Paper on PowerLink. Thank <music> you.